Hey you, so on this video, does vintage matter? I'm going to be speaking on just that now. Getting this video out kind of late as opposed to when I normally record them, so you may hear a bit more background noise going on in the background. So I'm going to be displaying these coins which I've recently picked up. If you follow my Instagram page, you'll know how I came about these, but I'll just go over them as I'm talking about um, does vintage really matter? Now, getting straight into this. Um, it's just came about as of a follow-up of the last video that I'd done and a few individuals had mentioned and it's, it's even something that's played on my mind before as to how much of a role does mintage really play when we're talking about a highly desirable or collectible coin and whether it will go on to do great things now in the past and as people have mentioned in the comments it's really well some would say mintage doesn't really play no role you have coins out there with I think the highest mintage that I know of that coins I've been involved in would be 1 million. Now think about that. That's a gargantuan amount in comparison to a 25k or anything under 100,000. This is a 2018 um, Gold Britannia. So when you have coins with a mintage of 1 million, the ones I know of would be something like the Pandas, early editions. And they still go on to really command a high premium. It would be a case of that map with a high mintage is still able to do well. So then you have to look at that and think, what's the demand? Now, I bring up the pandas because I think with those and it being so strongly related to the Asia market, it's a different type of coin as they really do purchase a lot of homegrown stuff. And we all know it's a very large population out there. So with a, with a mintage of a million, it being able to sell out and then be harder to get into individuals in the west hands could play a role but there i know there's a lot of us mint coins even britannia and raw mint coins that have had mintages up there that went on to do well so looking at whether it's the actual mintage or the demand i would say they both play a role but breaking this down i would say as i display my first buffalo that i recently purchased i cashed in some well, one whose name we shall not mention bitcoin and was able to convert it into real gold, not gold 2.0. But I would say um, demand plays just as much of a role. Now, when I say that, I look at something like the 2016 Peter Rabbit coin as an example. Now, that coin is no different from the 2017 and the 2018 that, went, that they went on to release. Now, a big role there could be because it was a first. I believe it was it had a mintage of 16,000. It was 15 or 16,000. And they sold out and it's now going for a crazy premium still today. And it's down near half an ounce of silver. Now, what I see it as is if you get a coin, this is why I think they're both as equal as one another. I wouldn't put one over the other. But I'd give a, a, a you know a dream scenario where you get a coin, uh, wherever it may be, it could have a favourable mintage. Now mints and dealers obviously pump this out for a reason. It adds to the collectability when it has a capped mintage, and it's of the mindset that if it's at a capped mintage once sold out, you'll never see it again. We all know that's not the case these days. If they do, I don't know Ferrari car coin tomorrow and it'll have a cap mintage of 150,000 they're not saying they're not going to re-release it you know that's how they really milk it nowadays they'll continue to do a series so it's not a one-off these kind of things play a big role when mentioning mintage in my opinion if we're talking this is a perfect scenario with the silver cougarans when i was saying when they had a mintage of 1 million as high as it was it would have been a one-off I could have seen that over time really meaning something. And individuals that purchased could have been able to see some type of returns in the long run, especially if they didn't do too well in the beginning. That's then individuals would have been able to pick them up at a later date for maybe cheaper and go on to do whichever and get themselves a bargain. But when you have a low mintage or even a high mintage, as mints will rather come out and do now, and then not cap it so you'll have a high mintage and they won't cap the mintage or it won't hit and then lack of demand should i say then you have a coin that goes off into limbo but when you have while well, i catch up with myself a high or a reasonably high mintage and then high demand that's the dream scenario i was talking about so when we look back at the 2016 peter rabbit coin with a 16k mintage and extremely high demand 
it goes on to do fantastic things. Now, you're getting the exact same coin. I, I highly doubt it was the actual image of the 2016 that went on to do great things or that people absolutely loved. They increased the mintage on the second time around. Everybody that didn't get one still ran in towards it, but it didn't do the same thing. So was there a lack of demand or was it just people got burnt out after that? This is how I think they're killing the whole mintage and demand scene in one. Whereas once upon a time, you could have got a one-off coin on a say a 1 million mintage it could have been a one-off and then you could have really capitalized from there. So whereas, you know, it's just not mintage nowadays and it's just not demand because both combined together are getting diluted from the actions that some of these dealers are taking and the mints are taking in general. So if I was to pick one over the other, I would I would easily say they, they're both as important as, as, as each other because realistically, with the right amount of hype, any coin can become hot tomorrow. You know, and it could have whichever, whichever. The Rwandan coins, which are burning hot right now, the first release, the Rooster, gold sat around out on dealer's shelves for a long time. And that's a prime example. There's many other coins. I've seen coins with mintages of too low, where you'll have a coin of a mintage of eight or something like that. For I think that's personally too low. Many have said the 100 on gold is too low, but I don't believe so because... <coughs> It can work against you if the coin is a standalone. So, for instance, you only bring out the coin in that design and on a very, very low mintage. It could be 100 or whatever. When you have the coin like the Rwandan, and once again, as a prime example, where you have an unlimited mintage from the silver BU, and then you have the 1,000 on the silver proof, it gets more people involved. So, the hype is being carried through. It's like a pyramid. You know, the silver be used at the bottom, then the silver proof is the middle and the gold's at the top. So everybody that wants or loves the design gets their dabs at it. And then, you know, those that are able to cream off the top at the very top can do so from there. We had the Dutch lion dollars people have asked me about. I never really got involved with, but, you know, I, f I believe they had the same model, but it seems they may have got caught up within greed. And this is another thing that goes on to destroy coins at a later date. So... The way I see it is sometimes it can be that one specific coin, just that one specific coin done once may, that's where you may be able to truly capitalize forever. And once again, going back to the 2016 Peter Rabbit, they've gone on to do a 2017 that's done nowhere near what the 2016 done and the 2018. So the dream scenario was a low mintage, which I think does play a big role, plus high demand is when you have a situation where a half an ounce of silver can sell for the price of a uh, one ounce of gold only then so i wouldn't say one it's you're not guaranteed but one thing does look good and i would put it slightly ahead of mintage's demand regardless of whether it's a tiny mintage or an extremely large mintage if you've got high demand it can go on to do great things but then demand needs to be built it's a hype game you know dealers and mints they work different as opposed to other products. There's no celebrity endorsements or, you know, David Beckham showing off this coin here today to murder the world. Mint usually do a press one when they've got big, expensive, fancy coins coming out. But in the coin world, there's only so much they can do. They put it out saying, coming soon. And I feel like a lot of the demands really left to individuals like myself, whether they're talking about whether they're going to be picking up the coin, what do we think of the coin. But it's being corrupted, whereas we could do a video like that now and you know, do some legwork for them for free, and then they go on and exploit us in terms of you know yanking up the prices, being you know, cherry picking coins, and and so it's the whole, entire market has been really corrupted, and it's, it's in a wish wash at the moment because it's not working on a chain where you know the little man gets his, the man above gets his, and so on. It's got to the point where things must be that tight for mints and dealers where. They just want all and we get none. But I feel demand slightly edges ahead of mintage. But if you have a low mintage with a high demand coin, you have the perfect scenario. The best of both worlds, really. So what are your views on that? Do you feel one is definitely more greater than the other? I've seen coins with extremely low mintages that have done nothing. 
they just but it's you know it's neither here nor there and that and as I mentioned the Rwanda rooster gold was sitting on shelf for a long time one dealer was able to capitalize I think on was able to secure damn near half of the stock because no one was interested in it until buzz I know I was one of the first to do gold videos on the coin and really build up some traction for it and then I've seen coins where a lot of people have been talking about it, you know, said it was the next best thing, and it just fell straight off. So you need to find that perfect sweet spot. It's a lot more is needed from individuals involved nowadays. You know, it's just not a coin that just drops and it just takes off by itself. So it'll be interesting to hear what you guys feel is, you know, does mintage and demand really play a big role for the next winning coin, or is it just a case of potluck? So go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comments. It'd be fantastic to hear what you guys think. Don't forget to come and follow me on the links that I've left in the description. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you guys on the rebound.